The important task of setting a ship's course when other ships are part of the maneuver becomes a problem in relative motion. When the ships are fairly close to each other, an experienced officer may rely on seaman's eye to complete the maneuver. Other conditions call for paperwork. The solution of a problem in relative motion is found by drawing two diagrams. Relative plot, showing successive directions and distances, and the vector triangle, showing directions and speeds. Relative plots and vector triangles may be drawn on plain paper with the aid of the necessary drawing instruments and scales, but plotting has been simplified through the use of a maneuvering board. This is a printed form prepared by the Navy for use in solving problems in relative motion. This film will show you how to draw and interpret relative plots and simple vector triangles on the maneuvering board. The most prominent feature of the maneuvering board is the plotting area, containing an azimuth circle calibrated in degrees to aid when plotting bearings and the reciprocals of the degrees to help you to locate bearings given from the guide or other reference positions. By using the azimuth circle, lines can be drawn in any required direction. Since the direction line on your plot will be drawn to represent a given distance or speed, four convenient scales have been provided at the sides of the maneuvering board. The spacing of these scales matches the 10 spaces printed faintly in the plotting area. They will assist you when you scale direction lines that originate from the center of the board and will serve as a guide in selecting the scale of your plot or diagram. Here is the direction of a ship bearing 0, 090 degrees true. Its distance is given as 24 miles. What is the most convenient scale to use? If each space represents 4 miles, the line will be 6 spaces long. If each space is taken as 3 miles, the line will be 8 spaces long, and the scale will be 3 to 1. You will want to make a plot as large as possible for increased accuracy. All distance measurements on a particular plot should be drawn using the same scale. Three calibrated lines at the bottom of the maneuvering board are marked for time, distance, and speed. Used together, they provide a rapid means for converting two known factors, time, distance, or speed, to the third factor. As an example, knowing the time interval between two bearings, 10 minutes, the distance between the bearings, three and one half miles, a straight line between these points on the scales will cross the third scale to give the desired answer, in this case, 21 knots. You can use dividers to convert factors to the third scale by setting them on the two known points and swinging the dividers to the third scale. Again, the answer is 21 knots. The upper or time scale is logarithmic, and again, using dividers, you will be able to employ this scale as a slide rule. A good example is determining the time required to steam 25 miles at 15 knots. Set one leg of the dividers on 15, the other on 60. This separation is the logarithmic proportion for ship speed, 15 nautical miles per hour or 60 minutes. To determine the time to steam 25 miles, shift the leg which is on 15 to 25. The other leg will fall on 100, the time in minutes. Six miles would require 24 minutes. You will use the maneuvering board to help you draw two separate and entirely different diagrams. One will be a vector triangle consisting of lines whose directions and lengths bear a mathematical relationship to each other. Each side will represent a direction and a speed. The other diagram will be a relative plot that shows the successive bearing and range positions from the reference point. The lines on a relative plot represent direction and distance. 
Usually, in stationing and formation problems, the guide or flagship will be the reference ship, placed in the center. In tracking problems, own ship may be considered as the reference ship, placed in the center, and marked as R. The problem is to determine the movements of another ship, the maneuvering ship, marked as M1. A second bearing and range, taken at a timed interval, will determine the relative movement of the maneuvering ship. This is marked M2. A line connecting the two positions represents the direction of relative motion. You can now determine the speed of relative motion. Set your dividers to the distance between the two positions of the maneuvering ship. Measure this distance using the same scale that you used for plotting the ranges. In this case, four miles. Now use the scales at the bottom of the maneuvering board to find a relative speed. Draw a straight line between the distance, four miles, and the time interval of the two bearings, 10 minutes. The extended line will cross the lower scale at a point that indicates the speed, in this case, 24 knots. You have completed a relative plot. This supplies direction of relative motion and relative speed for use in the vector triangle. The vector triangle is made up of six factors. Reference ship's direction and speed, maneuvering ship's direction and speed, and relative direction and relative speed. If any four of these can be determined, you can use the vector triangle to find the two unknown factors. In the vector triangle, the direction speed lines representing the vectors of the reference and maneuvering ships have a common point of origin, usually the center of the plotting area. You decide upon the scale to use, remembering to make the diagram as large as possible for increased accuracy. Direct the arrow for direction of relative motion away from the reference ship's vector. Usually, the vector triangle is drawn on the same maneuvering board as the relative plot to simplify the transfer of direction of relative motion from one diagram to another. For purposes of this film, the vector triangle and relative plot will be shown on separate maneuvering boards to emphasize the different terms they represent. You have been ordered to take station 3,000 yards, bearing 330 relative from guide. The guide is on course 345 true at speed 15 knots. Your present position is 6,000 yards on the starboard beam of the guide. What is your course to the assigned station? First, you begin the relative plot. The guide's heading is 345 true. Your position is on his starboard beam, 90 degrees from his heading. Mark your true bearing, 075 degrees from the guide. Taking each circle as 1,000 yards, you are one, two, three, four, five, six thousand yards from the guide. Mark your present position. Now mark your assigned position, three, three, zero degrees relative from guide. To do this, correct for the guide's course. This will determine your true bearing from the guide as three, one, five degrees. Measure three thousand yards from the guide in the center. Mark your assigned station. The direction of relative motion is from where you are to where you want to be. So plot a straight line between your relative positions, mark it, direction of relative motion, and add an arrowhead to show its direction toward 274 degrees. The length represents the relative distance you will have to make good to complete the maneuver. You have finished the relative plot and are ready to find your true course by constructing a vector triangle. 
begin the vector triangle by drawing the guide's vector toward three, four, five degrees. At a scale of two to one, the guide speed of 15 knots will make his vector seven and one half spaces long. Now with the parallel ruler, transfer the direction of relative motion toward 274 degrees from the relative plot to the end of the guide's vector. You cannot fix its length because your relative plot showed the relative distance and your vector length must represent speed. You extend the line to an indefinite length. You do know your own stationing speed, 19 knots, that is 19 on the two to one scale or nine and one half spaces. This will be the length of own ship's vector. From the same point of origin, the center of the board, mark the point where own ship's vector will intersect direction of relative motion. This point completes the speed of relative motion and also your own ship's vector. You have the correct answer to the problem. Course to the assigned station is 321 degrees. The vector triangle will enable you to quickly determine alternate courses and speeds. Here, for a course on 330 degrees, your speed will be 17 knots. This typical problem in relative motion begins with a radar contact bearing 035, range 24,000 yards, time 0900. As the OOD, you want to know what the other ship's motion is relative to your own ship and what the closest point of approach will be. You request another bearing at 0910. Meanwhile, you begin a relative plot. Since this is a tracking problem, your ship is in the center, making it easy to plot the positions of the contact. First bearing 035 true, range 24,000 yards. Using the two to one scale places it close to the edge, but still on the paper. It's always more accurate to use a large scale. Mark the time. At 0910, you receive another range and bearing. Range 20,200 yards, bearing 037 true. Using the two to one scale, you locate and mark this position. Again, noting the time. Draw a line connecting the two positions, extending it in the direction of the maneuvering ship's motion. This line shows the direction of relative motion, 205 degrees true. Still using the relative plot, you determine the closest point of approach. This will occur where a line 90 degrees from the direction of relative motion passes through reference ship's position. Subtracting 90 from 205 degrees gives 115 degrees true. the bearing of the closest point of approach. Labeled CPA.
you measure the distance at the CPA to the same scale that you used for the relative plot. In this example, the distance is 4,300 yards. You continue to take the bearing and range of the maneuvering ship since the direction of relative motion will change if the maneuvering ship or reference ship should change course or speed. To find the distance at which the maneuvering ship will pass ahead of own ship, draw a line for own ship's course, in this case, 060. Measure from own ship to the point where direction of relative motion crosses own ship's course. And you determine that the other ship will pass 7,400 yards ahead. If the radar bearings had shown the direction of relative motion to be in this direction, the other vessel would have passed to port and crossed well astern. A relative plot that shows the direction of relative motion toward own ship's position indicates a collision course. The maneuvering board will help you to find the relative speed of the maneuvering ship. Using the last example, measure the distance that the contact has moved in 10 minutes. This scales to 3,800 yards, or 1.9 miles relative. Six times the 10 minute distance will give you the hourly rate, 11.4 knots, which is the speed of relative motion. Checking by means of the nomogram at the bottom of the maneuvering board, Find the distance, 1.9 on the distance scale, and the time, 10 minutes on the time scale. A straight line connecting these two points, extending to the speed scale, will cross at the relative speed, 11.4 knots. Now you measure the distance the maneuvering ship will travel to reach the closest point of approach. At the relative plot scale of 2,000 yards per circle, 9.9 .9 circles makes it 19,800 yards. Find 19,800 yards on the distance scale, 11.4 knots on the speed scale, and draw a straight line between these points, crossing the time scale. Reading the time at the intersection, you know that the closest point of approach will be 52 minutes from the 0910 bearing or at 10.02. You can determine the true speed of the maneuvering ship by plotting a vector triangle. First, own ship's course in the direction 060. Own ship's speed is 12 knots. At a scale of, say, 2 knots per circle, the vector is drawn six circles long. Add an arrowhead to show direction and mark vector R. Plot the relative motion vector from the tip of own ship's vector. As previously determined, this is 205 degrees true. And scale it to the speed of relative motion, 11.4 knots. You use the same scale of 2 to 1 that you used for own ship's vector. Two vectors are now complete. The third vector will connect them. The direction of the maneuvering ship's vector is away from the point of origin of own ship's vector. Drawing this vector and extending to the azimuth circle determines the maneuvering ship's true course as 128 degrees. Mark vector M. You measure the length of the maneuvering ship's vector and again, using the same scale of 2 to 1, you determine her true speed, 7 knots. You have seen how the maneuvering board will help you to plot navigation problems. First, by the use of the azimuth circle to determine directions. Second, the maneuvering board has convenient scales for measuring distances on relative plots and speeds. Third, 
the maneuvering board scales simplify conversion of time, distance, or speed when any two of these factors are known. Remember, while you may place the relative plot and the vector triangle on the same maneuvering board, they have separate factors. The relative plot is a geographic plan and shows direction and distance. The vector triangle is a mathematical diagram and shows direction and speed. Examine the navigation problem to decide which ship will occupy the reference position in the center of the circle. Usually, own ship is the reference ship in tracking problems. While in stationing or formation relative plots, you determine own ship's direction of relative motion by placing the guide in the center. You will use the maneuvering board to help solve navigation problems throughout your naval career. A thorough understanding of its time-saving features will ensure the efficiency of your shipboard responsibilities.